Hello again. This video continues on from the first video presentation in the module. In this transaction, we sell office supplies that we no longer need to another party who wants them. The supplies cost us $100, so when we give them to the other party, we need to reduce the balance in the office supplies account, and then we can increase the cash account and record the receipt of the payment. The composition of the assets have changed, but the total assets have not, and that means the equities in the business have not changed either. We're now collecting some of the account receivable balance that we've carried forward from the transaction in which we provided the services to the customer on account. When the account receivable is collected, in this case partially collected, we'll need to increase cash to record the collection of the payment and then reduce accounts receivable. Our customer did owe us $500, but now our customer will only owe us $300. Again, this transaction only affects asset accounts. None of the liability or owner equity accounts are changed. Now we have a transaction in which an office computer is purchased, but it's purchased on account. Legal title passes to the buyer at the point of sale. So when Fred took delivery of the computer and brought it back to the business, then legal title had passed to Fred. An asset is a thing that we own that is going to provide benefits through future periods. Therefore, the computer is an asset, and we need to record an increase in our computer account to record the purchase. We can't reduce cash because we haven't paid for the computer yet, but just like before, with the supplies, we can record the obligation to make the payment in our account payable liability account. We now owe $5,200 to vendors. One is the office supply company, and the other is the store that we bought the computer from. In this transaction, cash is borrowed from the bank, and the bank has Fred Tall sign a promissory note. Interest will be charged on this loan while it's outstanding. We'll need to record an increase in the cash account, and then record an increase in the liability account notes payable. A promissory note is a long-term loan that carries an interest rate. It's different from an open account balance, which we refer to as an account payable. The reason for using two different liability accounts is so that we can report more detail about the business liabilities when it's finally time to do the statements at the end of the accounting period. In the next transaction, Fred pays the $200 account balance that's owed to the office supply company. In order to record the payment of that liability, we'll need to reduce cash assets by the $200, and then since we no longer have this $200 obligation, we'll need to reduce accounts payable. Let's look at a summary of all the transactions that we've recorded for Fred. After recording them all, our ending balances are as follows. Cash is $10,200, accounts receivable is $300, office supplies is $350, office equipment is $2,000, the computer account balance is $5,000, and then accounts payable is $5,000, notes payable is $3,000, and the ending owner equity is $9,850. If we add up all the equities, we'll find that they equal all of the asset account balances. Therefore, everything checks out and we do have our equality between assets and equities. This is a good thing since it indicates that no obvious mistakes have been made. We have recorded all of our owner equity transactions in a single owner equity account. We did this because I think it's the easiest way to present this information and the best way for you to learn about it. However, the textbook you're using probably utilizes several accounts for owner equity. We've also assumed that our business was a sole proprietorship, but it's also likely that your textbook does its accounting for a corporation. Let's examine this owner equity account and the owner equity transactions in a little more detail. Here we see our owner equity account on the left side highlighted in yellow. The textbook that you're using if it's written for a sole proprietorship, will have a capital account. If it's written for a corporation, it will have a common stock account instead. 
As we explained earlier, the additional accounts that can be used to record owner equity transactions would be the drawing account for owner withdrawals in a sole proprietorship or a dividends account for dividend payments, which are the same thing as withdrawals for a corporation, and then separate revenue and expense accounts. If we had used these accounts in our problem, our owner equity accounts would appear as shown here, and we would have separate balances in each of them. These individual balances all add up to the ending owner equity for our business, though, and that's the $9,850. Having taken a look at these accounts and their balances, let's now return to our single owner equity account summary and we'll then take a look at the next step in the accounting cycle, namely the preparation of the financial statements. Well, at the end of the accounting period, this information needs to be reported to interested parties. These are the people who want to know what the assets, liabilities, and owner equity in the business are. This information can be reported to the interested parties by constructing a set of standard financial reports. We have three major reports that we're dealing with in this module. The first is the balance sheet. And the balance sheet simply reports the information about the company's assets, the liabilities, and the owner equity. Let's take a look at our balance sheet. When we prepare it, we need a heading with the name of the business. We'll identify the report, and then we'll date it. These are the balances that we have in our business on December 31st of 2000XX. We'll list the balances and put all the assets on one side of the report. When we total them up, we get the total assets, and then we list all the liabilities, total them up, add the owner equity, and then get the total for all the equities in the business. This report is called a balance sheet for obvious reasons. The total assets have to equal, they have to balance with, the total equities. They do in our case, so everything looks good. Another statement is the income statement. And to work out the income statement, we need to go back to our transaction summary and look at all the transactions that we've recorded in Fred's capital account. Recall that this $200 and the $500 represented revenues that were earned in the business. The $200 was a cash collection of revenues and the $500 was work done on account. We then had expenses recorded, and that was the $100, the $200 utility bill, and the $50 of supplies that had been used up. Remember that the revenues that come from operating the business minus the expenses that are incurred in operating the business equals the profit earned from the business. Our second statement is called an income statement, and it's simply going to summarize these revenues and then subtract the expenses to determine the amount of profit that was earned in the business. Let's take a look at this statement. We see here that the total revenues earned in the business amount to $700. There were three expenses, and they add up to a total of $350, so when we subtract the profit which we call net income, from business operations is $350. If the expenses had been greater than the revenues, this would be a negative figure that we would call a net loss. There's one final statement we want to look at here, and that is our statement of owner's equity. We've returned here to our summary page, and note that we started with no balance in owner equity at all. The business had just started up. Then we had an investment made by the owner. We had revenues earned, expenses incurred, and then we also had a withdrawal. That resulted in an ending owner equity balance of $9,850. Our statement of owner's equity merely summarizes everything that happened during the accounting period to produce the ending balance in owner equity. That's going to be revenues minus expenses plus investments minus withdrawals. Let's take a look at this statement. Our statement of owner's equity is dated December 31st, 
and it indicates that Fred started the business up with no capital balance at all. Fred had no equity in the business on December 1st. But investments were made during the period, which would increase owner equity. Revenues were earned and expenses were incurred, and then there was a withdrawal. So overall, we've had an increase of $9,850 in the owner's equity in the business, and the ending balance in the capital account then is $9,850. If you're using a textbook that utilizes corporation accounts instead of sole proprietorship accounts, then you will see a statement of changes in stockholder equity rather than the statement of changes in owner equity that we just looked at. The statement of changes in stockholder equity will explain the events that occurred that caused changes in the stockholder equity accounts. We see two of them here, common stock and retained earnings. Common stock is the account that corporations use to account for stock issuances, the contributions of cash to the business by stockholders. Retained earnings is the account that will hold the corporation's net income, that is its revenues and expenses, as well as its dividend payments. When we add the issuance of the stock to the beginning balance in common stock, we wind up with the ending balance of 10500 Retained earnings would be affected by revenue and expense, so we'll add the net income of 350 and then subtract the payment of dividends, 1000 to determine a negative balance for retained earnings at the end of the period, namely a negative $650. This is because more was withdrawn from the business in dividends than was earned by the business during the period. When we add the $10,500 balance in common stock to the negative balance in retained earnings, we wind up with our same $9,850 overall ending balance for total owner equity. Note that corporations may also prepare a separate statement of retained earnings. If your textbook illustrates one to you, you'll note that it is simply the far right column of our report here, the one labeled Retained Earnings, and the Retained Earnings Statement simply explains all the things that happened during the period to account for the change in retained earnings, namely, net income will be added and the dividends will be subtracted. This concludes our video, and I hope it's been helpful to you.